Hello and welcome back to another episode of What's in the Word with evangelist Kevin Wagner and myself, Joshua Wagner, and we are in Acts 14 today, smack dab in the middle of Paul and Barnabas's first missionary journey. And uh, we're going to pick up where this story picks up in Iconium. Dad, would you read the first section there? This is verses mm -hmm. 1 through 7 of chapter 14. At Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went as usual into the Jewish synagogue. There they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Gentiles believed. But the Jews who refused to believe stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there speaking boldly for the Lord who confirmed the message of His grace by enabling them to do miraculous signs and wonders. The people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews, others with the apostles. There was a plot afoot among the Gentiles and Jews together with their leaders to mistreat them and stone them. But they found out about it and fled to the Lyconian cities of Lystra and Derbe and to the surrounding country where they continued to preach the good news. So you'll remember from last time that Paul and Barnabas were in Pisidian Antioch. They saw some great things taking place mm. there. They were preaching in the synagogue and then the Jews got jealous. That's true. And those Jews turned on Paul and Barnabas and um, ended up causing such persecution that Paul and Barnabas left the city. Hmm. They go to Iconium. They get to Iconium and it says, as usual, they went into the Jewish synagogue first and they began to preach the gospel to the, uh, to the Jews. And it says that they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Gentiles believed. So Amen. we praise God for the amazing harvest that is taking place mm -hmm. here. But the same sort of thing happens. The Jews who refused to believe mm -hmm. stirred up the Gentiles, poisoned their minds against the brothers. So what we have here is persecution in Pisidian Antioch that has now continued into Iconium. Um, there, is even, there are even some who would suggest that maybe some of the same Jews who were in Pisidian Antioch have actually followed yeah. Paul and Barnabas to Iconium and are the instigators of the persecution that is taking place here. Now, this doesn't pa stop Paul and Barnabas. It says that in verse 3, they spent considerable time there speaking boldly for the Lord who confirmed the message of His grace by enabling them to do miraculous signs and wonders. I just want to camp out there for a second because this is a really important thing, especially I think in our world today that, you know, Jesus dad in um, Mark 16, he says um, the, the very last verse of the gospel, it says that the Lord confirmed their message with signs and wonders. Absolutely. And here it says again, they were speaking boldly for the Lord who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to do miraculous signs and wonders. If you're preaching, the real true gospel, you should expect Jesus to confirm your words Absolutely. with signs, wonders, and miracles. Yes, 100%. This is what we see happen all the time over in our crusades, yeah. that when you preach the gospel, then you should expect God to show his approval for the gospel you're mm -hmm. preaching by performing miracles. And oftentimes, there are so many uh, miracles we see over there and people don't necessarily see as many over here and they wonder why is that well one of the big problems is because you're not preaching the gospel wow. some people over here they're just preaching you know feel good sermons or they're just you know you know self-help stuff hmm. and if you don't preach the gospel you shouldn't expect miracles hmm. if you don't preach about miracles you shouldn't expect miracles to take place and so oh. as you preach on the gospel which incorporates healing and the miraculous, um, as it did in Jesus' ministry, you should expect that miracles are going to take place in your ministry as well. And in fact, uh, we would say that the miracles help to sort of bring some sort of evidence to the fact that a person is doing the Lord's work. I mean, it's a validation. That's right. Um, of the you know, the power of God working through the man of God. Yep. Um, you know, the gospel is calling, to, it's just what, what Peter preached on yeah. Pentecost. Yeah. Repent and 
be baptized. It's just what Paul told the Philippian jailer we're going to see in Acts 16 coming up. Uh, repent and believe in the Lord Jesus. It's, it's about repenting of your sins. Yeah. Here we're living in a culture now where people are celebrating sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you need to be preaching that for, to people to repent of their sins and to give your sins to Jesus and trust him to trust his blood to forgive you. And when you do that, you're saved. Yeah. That's the good news. Yeah. You're saved from your sins and you can look forward to heaven. Yeah. That's the good news. That's the good news. That's the gospel. That's yeah. what gospel means, good news. So, and then when you do that, like you're saying, then you can expect God to also do what he also said he's gonna do. He's gonna confirm the message of his grace by enabling uh, you to do signs and wonders. Well, and you look at the ministry of Jesus. Jesus' ministry, you know, Mark chapter nine, or Matthew chapter nine says, he went around preaching, teaching, and healing. That's right. Healing is a significant part of the ministry of Jesus. Yeah. And so we shouldn't be surprised if that if it was a big deal to Jesus in his ministry, why would we expect it any different yeah. in our own ministry? We should expect Jesus to be healing people now. Yeah. And uh, he is. Now, it says in verse 4, the people are divided. Some of the people are siding with the Jews, others with the apostles. And there is a plot afoot among the Gentiles and Jews, together with their leaders, to mistreat them and stone them. And we're going to see that this plot, that uh, persecution starts in Pisidia and Antioch, Persecution is continuing here in Iconium. The plot to stone Paul and Barnabas is, is happening here in Iconium. And we're going to see right. it come to pass um, in, in uh, Lystra and Derby here. Now, one of these great miracles that we see happening, just, uh, you know, it said it sort of generally there in verse 3. And we saw a miracle already back in the beginning of the, um, the first missionary journey whenever Elemus was made blind. But here we have a great miracle taking place in chapter 14. Mm. Dad, would you read verses 8 through 10? Yeah, in Lystra there sat a man crippled in his feet who was lame from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, stand up on your feet. At that the man jumped up and began to walk. Okay, so... <clears throat> It's a great miracle yeah. that when they get to Lystra, almost the very first thing that they do is they do this miracle. And this is a great way to advertise, hey, we're in town and we're doing these meetings yeah. because um, this is a guy that everybody probably would have known. He was the, the city beggar, the city lame, crip, you know, the city cripple. Uh, it says that he'd been lame since birth. So this guy, he's an adult now. Now he's older and yet he's never walked. And it says that he listened to Paul as he was speaking. Yeah. Paul looked directly at him. And I love this, Dad. It says he saw that he had faith to be healed. I mean, he saw it in the eyes of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's like, you know, you can, you can see that someone's paying close attention. That's through the eyes of the natural. But to be able to see that he had faith to be healed. That's right. That's something that the Holy Spirit gives you insight into as you're preaching. And I that's mean, right. You see this happen a lot when we're preaching, but also with other people, you know, that as you're speaking, the Holy Spirit, you're sensitive to listening to his voice as you're speaking. Yeah. And in this case, Paul would have heard the Holy Spirit whispering to him in his heart, in his mind, uh, that man is ready to be healed. Mm. Well, and uh, this is a great point. You have to see with the eyes of the Spirit. We also know, James tells us that faith without works is dead. So faith is demonstrated by works. Yeah. And so it's also may have been that, um, you know, as Paul is looking out, he sees this crippled man, you know, a cripple, maybe he's got his, uh, certainly he's, it says that he, um, you know, he jumped up, but what did he jump up from? Well, he may have had a mat that he was laying on. He probably had a cane or something like that. Yeah. And maybe it's even like you, Paul could see like him him moving like like he's getting he, he's just believing in the message that Paul is preaching he starts to move his things aside as if he's almost getting ready to be healed the same way that we see happen in some of Jesus's miracles and um, and it says that the man's faith is what brought about the healing now remember this also where did he get his faith? Well, verse 9, he listened to Paul as he was speaking. Absolutely. Paul will tell us in Romans 10:17, faith comes by 
hearing and hearing the word of God. Yeah. So as this man is hearing the word of God, his faith is building. If you want to grow your faith, you got to hear the word of God. You got to meditate on the word of God. You got to listen to the word of God, quote the word of God, read the word of God. You got to get the word of God in you. As you do, your faith is going to grow. Yeah. And so this man is hearing the word of God. Paul, looking with eyes of the spirit, sees the man's faith. Um, and he says to him, he commands him, stand up and walk, which is the, the very sort of same thing that we see Peter do back in mm. Acts chapter 3, which is the same thing we see Jesus do at various times mm. in his ministry with cripples. Uh, it, it's obvious that these people are sort of... Uh, you know, they're doing similar types of things. And it says, at that, the man jumped up and began to walk. Yeah. And so this was an immediate healing. And I want to just encourage you, as you're listening to the Word of God now, we believe that your faith is rising. Your faith is growing. As Absolutely. faith comes by hearing the Word of God. That's right. And I just want to encourage you right now to take a step of faith. Yeah with what you're believing God for. It might be a physical miracle, might be some other miracle that you need, but we serve a miracle working God. Mm -hmm. And the same God who is showing up in the scriptures over and over again, we see here in the book of Acts, it's the same Jesus there with you now. And we wanna encourage you to put your faith in Jesus. Yeah. Stand up and walk, maybe literally, maybe figuratively, do something, exercise your faith. And the same God who healed then Mm -hmm. wants to heal you now because probably most of the people watching today josh are saved right you know maybe not all of you right. but you can get saved right now just yes. repent of your sins and trust jesus yeah but of certainly many of the people watching may not may not have received healing yet that's right and i know in my own life i've been healed dramatically and miraculously um, multiple times and of course we've seen this all, all the over time. the world so jesus is our savior Yes. And he's also our healer. That's right. So yeah, what you said. And to preach the whole gospel mm -hmm. incorporates not just salvation, but also healing. Absolutely. Jesus took stripes the same day he mm -hmm. was crucified on the cross. And um, those stripes were for your healing. And that's why Peter in Acts 3, that's what he's preaching. And that's why here in Acts 14, that's what's happening. And as we're going to see, uh, this miracle was a real attention getter. Yeah. in Lystra that caused many people to be aware of the message uh, that Paul and Barnabas were preaching. And so we're going to sort of see what happens after this man is healed in the next uh, episode of What's in the Word. And we want to thank you for joining us. And if you are healed, as we believe that you are, as you yeah. put your faith in Jesus, man, send us a message, yes. write a comment on the YouTube yes. channel. Let us know how this has ministered to you so that we can rejoice with you mm -hmm. in the miracle working uh, God that we serve doing a work in your life. And that is what's in the word.